All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Takedown Chain 23. I'm Isaac, and today we'll be doing the first redstone tutorial of the channel. Let's get into it. Here, what we have in front of us is what I've been working on for a couple of days now. It is an automatic sorting system, right? So you have your input chest here. You just dump all your items in, just put them in, doesn't matter what they are, and it will automatically sort them into the chest, right? So each chest is filled with whatever items you want. And then as the items travel down the system, it tries to put them into each chest. If it can go in the chest, say it's a grass block, it can just go into this slot here. But if it's not, then it won't go into this chest and it'll continue through the system into the next chest. And it will continue doing that all the way through until it either finds a chest it can get into or it'll find the last chest and just go into here. This is for the non-stackable items or just items that you haven't put in your sorting system yet. They will end up in the last chest. I designed this for my survival realm. Now, I needed it to be fairly compact, right? This is still pretty chunky, except I did a bit of searching on YouTube and all the silent systems that I could find, well, they were massive, like they'd stick out like to here or something. Like, I just, I didn't have the room, right? I don't have much room in my base. So I need it to be as compact as possible. So I designed this. It sticks out four blocks from the chests. So you still need quite a bit of space, but it's I think it's a good improvement on the ones that I've found. Uh, if you can improve the design, I'd love to see it, but I think it works pretty well and it's silent, which is really the main thing I was going for. It's I found some really simple ones, but they were really loud. Like you just have these droppers constantly firing and it was really it was ear deafening. Like I did not like that sound. Like it'd kind of drive you crazy after a while. It also sticks out one block from the wall, which is something you have to be careful of if you don't have much space. And also it goes down two blocks beneath the floor, right? So that's the space that you need. I think this is a very neat design, very functional. So let's get into the tutorial. First thing you want to do is put in the chest, right? So I'm choosing to have three columns with five chests in each column. Now you can do whatever you want with this. You can have as many chests as you want. It can be taller and you can put as many columns as you want. Now we need to space the columns out two blocks apart from each other for the redstone to fit. So we just go two blocks over and place in the next column. Now that we've got the columns of the chests in, we want to place the droppers and hoppers behind the chest. So first off, we need a dropper on the bottom right of the chests. Then we need a hopper going into that dropper, and then a dropper on top of the hopper. And now we repeat that. So a hopper running into that dropper, and a dropper on top of the hopper. Alright, so we're going to do the redstone for one column and then we'll just repeat it for the other two. So now you want a block on each dropper except the top one and then another one down here, right? So you've got your comparators. You can have a comparator facing out from each hopper. Now you need to connect up each comparator to its dropper. So place blocks like that, repeater, we need a glass block or a transparent block and another block and there and two redstone dust there for the comparators on the right for the comparators on the left we want to put a block here repeater coming out of there and block there and here and a redstone dust there so they're a bit different on this side after the repeater you have a block of glass with the redstone and then more redstone running into a block next to the dropper. On this side, we have, after the repeater, it runs into a block, which is into a redstone dust, which is empowering this block behind the dropper, right? So now we have one on the right again. So 
replace block here, repeater, last block, and just like that. And we repeat this step for all five or however many chests you have. Now let's repeat this for each of the columns, right? So we start off with a dropper on the bottom right of the columns and then hoppers run into them and droppers on top. Now we place a block on each of the droppers except the top one and also one down here. And we have comparators facing out from each hopper. Now we connect them up to the droppers. So on this side, repeater, glass block, and block on this side. And then on this side, we have a repeater and a block up there and here, and this running into that. Now, now that they're together, on the top one, we need to place a block here to stop those two from connecting. Other than that, it's pretty much the same for this side. Now we've done it on these two columns, now let's just do it on the third. Now we have all the redstone systems in place. Basically, as the items go through, so let's say, for example, we're sorting redstone. It'll go through into this hopper, it'll get detected by this comparator, and it'll send a signal to this dropper. It'll then try and fire the item into the chest. Now, if it's a redstone, it can easily go into the chest. But if it's, say, a redstone torch, it can't go into the chest because it's filled with redstone. So instead of going into the chest, it will go down to this hopper. That'll detect the item and it'll fire this dropper trying to put it into this chest. And it can go into this chest, so it'll put it here. Now you'd have each chest filled with the items that you want. So it'll keep going, trying each chest until it can find the chest that it wants. Or it'll go through the whole system and end up in the last chest which you just leave blank. All right, at this point, we can try it out. If I was to throw redstone dust into that hopper, you should see it goes into this chest like that. But if I throw a redstone torch into it, we get picked up and it can't go into this chest, so it'll go into the next available chest. Now, we need to build in the systems that take the items back up to the top once they reach the bottom. Because at this stage, each column individually is working but they need to get transported back up to the top to start in the next column. To do this, we're going to be building some item elevators. We're going to start with a dropper facing up on this glass block and build it all the way up until you are at the level with the top. Then you start the observer tower. So you start it one block beneath the contraption and bring it up till the top of the observers. You then place some observers firing towards each dropper and some solid blocks in between them. Now if you were to place an item in this dropper and update this observer, it should come up the top and make one click when it comes out the top. If there's not an item in it, it will make a series of clicks as they all get fired. Now we need to place a small hopper line running from this dropper to this dropper. So first of all, you need to switch out this glass block and this block for some hoppers running this way. Now just place back that repeater and redstone dust. Like that. Okay. 
Now run these hoppers this way until they are underneath this dropper. Now we need to make it fire this item elevator when an item passes through the hopper line. So, we've got to get a comparator here. And we need a block like this. Redstone dust. And you need a repeater set to three. Now these repeater timings are very important. If they're not set correctly, it, the machine will not work. So they need to be correctly timed. Then we build a ring around here. Then we need a repeater, repeater here, and repeater here. This one needs to be set to two. All right, and then we bring these around here. We place a block to stop these from connecting. And this part should be done. So what this is here is it is a system. Let me just grab a lever. So when the item passes through, it'll send a signal like this, and then it'll turn off and send a quick flash updating the observers. If you don't have this and it's just hooked directly to the comparator, then the pulse will be too long and it will detect when it turns on and when it turns off. And it'll send two signals through the item elevator, which will make it click. And we don't want that. Now, for testing purposes, if we put a hopper here and we put an item in here, you should see this, set off that, and it should fire the item elevator, and the item should appear on top of this dropper. Alright, now we got to send the items from the top of here into the next hopper over here. So what we're going to do is we want to place a double chest. You could just use the hoppers, but if you have a double chest here, it just saves on hoppers, because they cost 5 iron each. Now we just bring these over to the top of this. Now we'll then fire them into here, we'll go through here, into the chest, and into the hopper, and then into this column. Now we're going to repeat this for the bottom of this one, coming up into this one. Now we have both of the item elevators in place. For the third column, since it's the last column, we actually don't need this dropper here. So we can get rid of this one and this hopper and just have a hopper going straight into that chest. Let's get rid of this comparator and all the stuff that it was attached to. Because we don't actually need it since this last one, we're not sorting anything. This is just the chest where any items that aren't accounted for in the system or non-stackable items will end up. This build is now almost done, but before it's finished, we need to add an input chest over here. So I'm putting my input chest in this position. You can move it around to wherever you want really, but you just gotta hook it up to the system that I'm about to show you. I'm gonna build up a third item elevator on the side here. It's going to be one block away from this chest and one block down. Start it here and bring it up until it is at that level. So now we've got to get an observer tower going. And just bring it up to the level of the droppers like that. Now we do the same as all the other ones where we just bring the observers pointing towards each dropper and place in these blocks. Unlike the other ones, this row here doesn't need to come down by one because it's just laid out a bit differently. We're now going to put a hopper here and bring this around and up to there. So we want to place a comparator coming out of this hopper facing this way. Bring this out, redstone, and a repeater, and then we bring this down one block over here. Now, like with the other ones, underneath this observer, 
And there we need to place a ring around here. And we have repeated here, here, and here. This one is set to two ticks. That's important. And we just bring that stand out here. Cool. And there we have a block. Alright, so now you should see that if you place an item here, it should make one click when it comes out the top. Now all we have to do is just bring those hoppers over to the top here. For one more thing, we need to place a clock here that only lets the items through at a certain timing so that it doesn't go through the system too quickly. So we want to place a hopper here. This hopper isn't actually for item transportation. It's just to update the observer when it gets powered because you can lock hoppers with redstone. The observer detects that when this redstone gets powered. So you have a comparator here and you just bring this out like this. You have one here. This is set to three ticks and these two are set to four ticks. If it's any faster than this, that sometimes the redstone contraption can't keep up with the items. So just some redstone dust here and here. And the last block, grab a redstone torch and place it here. Now, when we put items in here, you should see it'll go through the chest as normal, but they'll start collecting in this hopper. And if we stop it from the chest, see it only lets it through at a certain timing. And it shouldn't be making any noises, and it should be putting it into the chest at the next available slot. Now, all that's left is to fill each chest with the items you want, and it should work. Also, you can cover up some of the redstone. You know, you can put blocks here as walls, put in a floor. You know, wouldn't normally have a floating sorting system. I've now filled up this first column with random items I just had in my hotbar. You see, there's nothing but just one for each slot currently. Now, I can just demonstrate by just dumping all the stuff in my inventory just into this chest, right? Now it'll slowly start feeding them into the system. And first one was droppers. So, there we are. Now you can see they've all gone into the dropper chest now. Also, if I put a, an item into the system that I don't have, like say a lever, you know, put in a few levers. Since they can't get into this column, they'll get should get sent up and go into this row, end up in this chest, which is the first available chest they can go into. Yep, and there we go. Levers have ended up in this chest. So once you've filled up all the chests, you'd probably leave this one with nothing in it so that it takes any overflow, or else they could get stuck in the last dropper and clog up the system and stop it from working down the bottom. It is now finished. That concludes the tutorial. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If there's something you'd like to see, tell me because there will be more redstone tutorials in the future. But uh, for now, I'll see you later. Bye.